Good evening. Good evening. Now that I've muted one of my computers, I can speak. Just while we're waiting for everyone to arrive, one of the things I want to do today, everybody, is do a little bit of work on something that each person needs to work on. We have, of course, limitations around space. So you might want to think, for example, about particular fundamental movements you're less comfortable with. There might be other exercises like your step sparring that you're not so familiar with. There might be things like that that you want to work on. So have a think about the things in particular that you want to work on. Okay, if there's anything in particular you want to work on, whack it into chat now. Just send the message to everybody so that both Dr. V and I can see it. Sir, do you know you have three instances of yourself? Uh, only two of them are mine. The other one is my wife. Yes. Okay. <laughs> She's taking attendance. Ah. Uh, and I have the two computers, one with the gallery up on my big screen so that I can see everyone when I'm teaching and the other one of me teaching okay. that I'm recording. The tricks of Zoom. Lessons learned from England, from one of the masters in England that I talk to a lot. Okay. Okay, thank you, Liam. We're trying to do a little bit of technical stuff today. We might also do some fitness in our space because fitness is cool. I've got one thing that someone wants to work on, really. I think, uh, I think everyone needs to work on the bending resistance. Cool, thank you, Dr. V. Nice one to work on. Okay, let's get started. Well, we're a bit light on numbers so far today. Okay, thank you, Lockheed. Come here. And raise your right hand, recite the tenets. Shoot up. Courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self control, indomitable spirit. And the student note. Shoot up. I shall observe the tenets of Taekwondo. I shall respect the instructor and seniors. I shall never misuse Taekwondo. I shall be a champion of freedom and justice. I shall build a more peaceful world. But okay, we will modify some of our fitness stuff so that Mr. West can do it as well. <laughs> no escaping. We just might drop out the squats and do something else instead. Okay, so first up, just rotating your joints. Quick rotations, change direction. Elbows. Change direction. Arms back. And forwards. And torso. Good 
left ankle. Change direction. We've got four students tonight that are all approximately the same grade. That gives us lots of options too, Dr. V. Mm -hmm. Change leg. Change direction. Just as I say that, someone joins us a different grade. Okay, hands on knees. Uh, Lockie, remember to, to change this exercise out. And circling the legs outwards. And then words. And hips. Change direction. And Gumar. Now, it's good having Cam here because one of the things he's got to work on for his grading, of course, is push ups. One of the ways to improve your strength for push ups is to do push up variations. So you get slightly different uses of the muscles. So we're going to work on the cross because the cross is awesome. Remember, with the cross, we're going to do five push ups with our hands under our shoulders. That's our home position. Then we bring our hands in the width of our hands and do five push ups. Then we go back home. And we go out the width of our hands and do five push-ups. And we come back home. Then we go forward the length of our hand and do five push-ups. Come home. Then go back the length of our hand and do five push-ups. And come home. Then from here, we're going to go in two. So our hands are pretty much well, hard up against each other. Do five push-ups. Then you go out one. And out a second one and turn your hand sideways and do five push-ups this way. Then you come back home. Then you go forward two hand lengths and do five like this. Great stuff from Mr. Um, Bamford Campbell. And back here. And then down one and turn your hands around. So they're down by your belt and do five this way. And then for those that are really feeling strong, you can then do five fully extended the lanes. Otherwise, you can do them elbows on the ground and then push up from the ground. Okay, so that's together, five of each of those comes to 50 push-ups, which is awesome. And for those of you that are going to struggle a little bit, that's okay. Just do your best on the way through. If you find that you're doing two or three of each type instead of five, that's okay. Except for, for Cam. He's going to do five of everything because he's working up to 50. So, hands right under your shoulders and pop out five push-ups. Just on the palms. Then come in one palm width, one hand width, and do five push ups. You'll feel a different muscle group in, then come back home. Then go out palm width, so it's a little bit wider, a bit more chest, and five push ups. And come back home. Okay, everyone with me so far. Now we go forward a hand width, width uh, length rather. So wherever your fingertips end, that's where the heel of your hand goes. And do five push-ups. And then come back home. Then we go back, fingertips are where the heel of the hand was. And then we come back home. Now we're halfway there. Hands touching on top of each other, 
Nice arm push-ups. And back home. And out one. And out a second one, turn sideways. Nice and wide. Come back home. Go forward two. So you're quite extended with your body. Come back home. And back two, so your hands are down by your belt and turn your hands upside down. Come back home and then extend forward as far as you can. That was 50. How cool is that? Oh, oh somebody just missed. <sighs> Jacob just missed our 50 push ups. Now, I'm going to use a stack of cushions for the next exercise. You can use something similar, you just want to elevate your side a bit. Because we're going to do some, some uh, asymmetric push ups. Jacob, just turn off your background. So we need a little bit of height. There we go. Hi, Mr. C. Okay, one hand goes on your pile of cushions, other hand on the ground, and do five or 10 push ups. And then swap hands. If you've got one hand that's weaker than the other, this is a really good way to balance your strength out because the hand that's lower is going to do more work. Let me get rid of our cushions. Then we'll do a little bit of work on the coolest muscles in the body. The core. Okay. Sitting on your bottom. So far, so good. Lean back. Just rest your elbows on the floor. But when you do so, make sure you're tucking your pelvis. So I've got a little arch in this part of my back. It's curving this way like a dish. Not curving backwards. Curving backwards will hurt my back. So I'm going to tuck my core in like this, and then I can lift my legs off the ground a little bit. And then from here, I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep that core nice and tucked. Then I cross my feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. But Liam, higher with your legs. In bicycles. Higher with your legs, yes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then extend them out. And then relax. Okay, not so high, Cam. And you're a little bit off the ground. But very importantly, we've got to get that dish shape with the body. Okay, if, I, if my back tucks in and my tummy sticks forward, I'm losing all the benefits and I'm going to hurt my back around here. So I've got to tuck my torso in so my core is nice and strong when I do this. Okay. There's all sorts of crazy exercises like this, like writing the alphabet with your feet. I'm going to play with that sort of silly stuff today. Back on the elbows. Tuck that core. Keep that core nice and tight. Bring your legs off the ground. Up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Crossing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bicycle. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Doing it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Crossing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bicycle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And relax. When you do that, guys, you need to find the sweet spot between the height of your legs and the curvature of your back. If your legs are too low, it will be really difficult to keep a rounded lower back, okay, as Master B just told you. So maybe you need to lift a little bit more your legs in order to have your lower back well rounded. Thank you, Dr. B, yes. And if you lift your legs too high, then there's no benefit whatsoever. Yeah. So that's the balance that Dr. B was talking about. Okay. Ready for round three. Okay. Lie back. Curve that core. Lift your legs up. Up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Crossing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bicycle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Crossing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And uh, what we have to? Right, uh, bicycles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Crossing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up and down. Uh, bicycle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And right. So the next, next thing, I don't know if you were able to see clearly with uh, the resolution, but when you do up and down and cross, you need to keep your legs as straight as possible. Yes, okay. if you don't go like this, yes. this is doing nothing. Yeah. Send them out. So straight legs, straight legs. Of course, not with a bicycle, okay? But up and down, crisscross, you need to keep your legs straight. Okay. Now, one of the best things you can do when you're working on your abdomen is isolate the different parts of the muscles. So you should feel, if you've been doing that well, that about the middle part of your abdomen is a little bit tight. That's the bit that we were working on around the middle bit. We want to do a little bit up top and a little bit down the bottom. So from here, this time we're just going to do little crunches. Okay, so from here, if I, the secret here is I've got to curl. I'm not going to come out too high, but I'm going to curl my body. Curl my body, and then come back down. Okay, so ready, feet flat on the floor, knees are bent. From here, I'm going to curl up. Don't put your hands behind your neck, behind your head, because then you'll start pulling with your hands, and that's not good for your neck. So just either have your hands in front of you, or put your fingertips on the side of your head. A little curl, but the key thing we want to focus on is curling the core. So I'm not going to come very high off the ground here. I'm just curling up, trying to get my shoulder blades off the ground and no more. Okay, ready? Let's do 20. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I've gone on the next one before, feet straight up for the lower part, just little lifts. Don't swing, 20 little pelvic lifts.
So Master B, can you explain a bit more? Because I'm not sure they clearly saw what you were doing. So you were lying on the floor and you were lifting your lower back, pushing your feet towards the ceiling, but at the same time, you were lifting your shoulder blades from the floor, correct? Uh, the shoulder blades were unnecessary, but it was just trying to keep balance, probably. So thank you very much, yes. So I'm watching that one again, guys, because it is really tricky. What I'm trying to do with this, the lower part of my abdomen, around my belt, that's the area that I'm working on, okay? So what I'm trying to do is lying flat on my back, lifting my legs straight in the air. I'm just trying to use the lower part of my abs and curl them to lift just my hips off the floor. So I'm just tightening that lower part of my core. So my hips only come off the floor about this much. You can't even see, that's how far, how small it is. Only coming off the floor a couple of centimeters. So I'm just curling that bottom part of my back, just like that. Your feet aren't, you're not swinging your legs, you're using that lower part of your tummy to curl up and lift the hips off the floor. Your shoulders and head can pretty much stay where they are. I just do that to try and keep the upper part of my core engaged when I'm doing it. Okay. Let's try another set of those. If you're doing them well, after doing 20, you should feel your muscles burning. They're really tough if you do them well. Okay, give it a go. Legs up. So it's from back straight, flat. Leg, straight legs. So I start with my back flat and then I just curl the lower part of my abs up. Straight up, straight up with your legs. Don't put your hands behind your head. The hands are in front of you or at your temple, your fingers on the temples. Okay, but not behind the head. Although there is less risk of neck, neck um, hurting on this one because you're not lifting your shoulders off the ground. But yeah, you still good have it hidden by your head. Such a great exercise. We'll do one more set of those because they're really cool. So only a little movement and control it. Okay, don't flip yourself up. From here, I'm gonna control it and lift, lift, lift. Do another 20, go. Come on, Mr. Christian. Come on, Jacob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Keep them straight. Keep them straight. I'm going to show you one more exercise. Uh, but some of you that are on hard floors, Liam, you'll be able to do this with no problem. Jacob, with your mat, you'll be able to do it with no problem. Anyone who's on a hard floor like me, it'll be much more difficult. So I want to show you, Isabel, I can't see what your flooring is. I think if you're on carpet, aren't you, Isabel? Yeah, so you'll be able to do this with no problem as well. Uh, but Lockie and Cam, you, you might want to save this till you've got a nice soft surface. So that dish shape that we were talking about before, if we're basically standing straight here, tuck the core in, you get a little bit of a curve in your back and extending the arms out this way. I'm going to do that lying on the ground so I get that little curve. And then from here, I rock back and forward, and back and forward. Just try it, particularly not as hard as I thought on the wooden floor. You're going to keep that back curved. Keep that dish shape with your body. Okay, watch for a moment. Some of you are bringing your legs up too high like this. So I'm actually changing the shape of my body. I've got to maintain this shape so my feet won't come any higher than this. 
So I'm maintaining that disc shape with my body. As soon as your core gives out and you feel your backbone, you've got to stop. Just like doing a prone hold. Okay, so try a few. It's called hollow rocks. So keep that disc shape with your body. Keep those hands extended out behind your head. One. Isabel, you want to reach those hands behind your head rather than being up over your head this way. Reach them back behind your head as much as you can. And keep that core nice and tight, nice locky. Too high with the legs, Cam. There we go. Just maintain that up and down. Reach your hands behind you, Cam. Hands are behind you this way. Keep the core engaged, you'll get a nice curve and you just gently roll on the curve. Good for you. And stop and grab a drink. Oh, right, Cam, awesome. Okay. Now, the two fundamental movements we decided we were going to work on, I want to start for both of those with an L stance. We're going to talk about dimensions first before we practice it. So as we know, the starting point that I use to measure most of, almost all of my stances is the walking stance corpus middle punch. Because we know technically, regardless of body shape, in almost all cases, the front of your fist lines up vertically with your third toe. That's a walking stance. From here I also know I can pivot into sitting stance and I can pivot into fixed stance with my weight in the middle. They're all the same lengths. If I then bring my foot back, the width of my foot, maybe a little bit more to account for the difference, I then get the length of my L stance. Okay, 70% of my weight is on my back leg, 30% is on my front leg. We know that this front toe and the back heel are in line and my feet are turned outwards only 15 degrees, which leaves about two and a half centimeters between my heels. This heel and my other heel is about two and a half centimeters between them. I've got lines on my floor, so I can use those, and I'll see that quite clearly. I have to open my knee outwards here. Don't let the knee connect, collapse in. Open out that knee. This knee is bent, so it's vertically over the toes. And then this knee just bends however much it needs to to stay in the set to, so that this one can bend over the toes. Okay, my torso is upright and I'm always half facing. I'm never side facing like this, never. Always half facing in an L stance. Okay, torso upright. So this is my L stance. Moving on to bending stance, I just keep my body position the same and lift that front foot off the ground. Okay, so there's slightly more dip in that back leg. And it's gonna, my back knee is gonna open slightly further out to get my center of gravity. So rather than being over my toes, it's gonna be out this way a little bit more. My supporting foot comes up. This is being really sounds type A, of course. Ready for my foot sword. My toes and foot pull back. And I've got to sit. And this comes just up in front of my knee. So that's bending stance. I've got to bend in bending stance. So a fixed stance and our L stance are the same width. 50-50 body weight, changing to 70-30 body weight. We also on the same line for rebelts, vertical starts, okay, 60-40 body weight. But then rear foot stance is a little bit different, okay. Now vertical stance technically is a shoulder width from this toe to this heel, in the same way that a walking stance is one and a half shoulder widths. Okay, so it tends to be a little bit longer than that. But we think of approximately two fists or just over two fists between your heels. Rear foot stance is shorter, okay, from here. If the main difference as well, so first up, rear foot stance is technically a shoulder width from my foot sword to my toes, not my reverse foot sword to my toes. So it's shorter again, okay. 
But there are some other significant differences. Instead of lining up heel to toe, with rear foot stance, it comes inward to the center of my foot. And the angle changes from 15 degrees to 25 degrees. Okay, so it's shorter. It lines up this way with the center of my foot. And the angle is slightly more at 25 degrees. I bend both of my knees and the heel of my front foot comes off the ground. Like all the other stances that we've talked about, it's always half facing. So always half facing, always half facing, always half facing, always half facing. Okay, all of these stances. So here's my rear foot stance, heel off the ground. Now, this then becomes interesting when it comes to finishing the stance at the moment of your block or attack in some cases, or blocking the attack in quite a few cases actually in senior times. So how you finish your stance at the same time as your technique becomes interesting. Sometimes the general used to actually lift his foot and touch at the same time. So for when you're doing, for example, Jung Jun, a kick here, step down, this foot would be off the ground and it would touch as he drops his body down. And that's kind of a nice way of thinking about it. One of the other ways people tend to make a mistake with rear foot stance is they overextend this ankle. Now we don't want to do this with the rear foot stance. The heel's just off the ground. So it's just relaxed most of the way on the back foot and the ball of the foot just touching the ground. Just here. Nice and simple. Okay. Any questions about those? Feel free to unmute and ask. While you do that, I want to find something in here. Put my head up. Oh, I thought we had the foot diagrams in this book, but we don't. Only for the basic stances. It's on the black belt. Syllabus. Black belt syllabus book. Thank you. We've got them for parallel attention, uh, walking in L in the in the um, gut syllabus handbook. So for anybody that's got the black belt syllabus handbook, all the foot, the foot diagrams are in there. Oh, I've got to correct one thing that I said. So here's my rear foot stance diagram. Okay. The thing that I have to correct that I said before, my apologies, that's what I was checking actually, I was being sneaky. For vertical stance, the foot sword lines up with the heel, so it's narrower. Okay, so my L stance, it's my toe and heel that line up, so there's two and a half centimeters between my heels. When I come, for, come into vertical stance, my foot sword and heel line up. It felt wrong when I was saying it, that's why I wanted to check. And then rear foot stance is a little bit shorter again and slightly more turned, so that heel and the two heels line up. Okay. Everyone comfortable with the theory of the stances? Raise your hand if you're comfortable. Okay, raise your hand if you're not comfortable. Okay, so now let's do some. What I want to start with then is just using forearm guarding blocks. So from here, I'm going to go. One, two, three. L stance first. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, everyone on your feet, just doing that left and right. One, two, three. Make sure you're reaching back. Hands in front, pull back, block. Hands in front, pull back, block. Something else I want to work on, nice trajectories. Don't drop your hands when you pull back. Keep your hands up. They rise up a little bit in your backward motion. But they never drop down below that shoulder height. Let it flow from left to right. Isabel, you could be a little bit longer in that L stance just to get you a little bit more ninja looking. A little bit more. Ugh, ugh. Okay, Liam, make sure you're pulling back the hands for your, your guarding block. You're coming back to about here. Yeah, you got to pull back to here. And then accelerate. Liam, do not rush because when you're rushing, your supporting leg, your back leg is dropping 
on the inside, your knee is dropping on the inside, you need to keep your knee aligned with your foot. Okay. Jacob, good. When you reach back, just be careful that you don't straighten the arm all the way because that'll stop it. Just keep it bent. Yeah, better, better. Press out, press out. Press your knee outward. Good. Press your knees outward. Okay, now I want you to change the fixed stance. So same motion, fixed stance guarding block. Feel that weight is 50-50 in your feet. It should feel different from your L stance. Start to feel the acceleration in your hands. So one, two, and accelerate on three. One, two, accelerate on three. So slightly longer than your L stance, the width of your foot longer than your L stance. Okay, next fixed stance guarding block, stop. On the fixed stance, do your fixed stance guarding block and stop, go. Okay, now do four more and stop on the fourth one, go. Go one, two, three, four. And then stop on the fourth. So you're in fixed stance. Now from this one here, I want you to pivot into walking stance and feel whether it's right. Was it too short? Okay, now when I say this, be careful. My angle changes, watch. If I'm in fixed stance here, when I pivot to walking stance, my walking stance is facing over this way. It's not facing this way, it's facing this way. But the length should be right. Okay, so do a few more. Do four or five fixed stance guarding blocks, and then stop and pivot and check that you're in a correct walking stance. Challenge yourself, is your stance too short? Be a little longer, Jacob. Okay, come on. Now I'm gonna mess with your heads. So, cam vertical stance, you need to know everyone else is gonna do it. The key difference with the vertical stance from all the other half-facing stances we've done so far tonight is your legs are straight. So how does that change your movement? How does my movement change if my legs are straight in the stance? What's gonna be different? Nobody knows except Dr. V. Come on. What's different about parallel stance punch compared to sitting stance punch? Yes, Isabel. Just unmute an answer if you know. What's different between parallel stance punch and sitting stance punch? You have to go up, then down. You can't go down, up, down. Thank you, Lockie. We have to rise up on our toes because we can't use knee spring. If we were to use knee spring with straight legs, then we'd have to go, we'd have to go up to finish, not down to finish. It doesn't really work. So when you're doing vertical stance, you gotta go up on your balls of your feet. One, two, three. One, two, three. Just like we do with parallel stance punch. It's gonna feel weird. Go. Do it. It's really strange. Have you ever tried this, Dr. V? Um, a long time ago. A long Stand time. up and give it a go. It's really weird. Yeah. Because the other thing, quite often when we do straight leg stance, stances and stay there, it's usually a closed stance or a um, or a parallel stance and we're usually not changing from one to another we're usually staying stationary it's weird so when you do that guys uh really pay attention to your foot okay when you move your foot so the front foot 
so that it's in the correct place. I can see that some of you are putting your foot too much on the outside. Remember, the, the heel has to be aligned with the foot wall. So both foot angles are 15 degrees, just like your L stance, about two fists between your heels and your foot sword and your heel line up. And the front leg is straight. Both legs, so give it a go. Back leg, 15 degrees, front leg straight. Check them. Do one and then check your stance. Won't be long before you'll be examined on this, guys, so get comfortable with it now. Leg straight, Liam. Leg straight. Okay. That wasn't enough of a mind mess for you, so I'm going to throw you a little bit of a spanner. Now we're going to go L stance, fixed stance, vertical stance, L stance, fixed stance, vertical stance. Now the difference that you should feel is remember, when you go from a stance with legs bent to a stance where legs are straight, or vice versa, you use sine wave with your knees and you don't rise up on your toes. So if I'm going from my fixed stance here to my L stance, I'm going down, extending up on my heels stay on the ground. Okay, so there's no real drop down in this movement. Okay, down, up, flat. Go, L stance, fixed stance, Vertical stance, L stance, pick stance, vertical stance, L stance, fixed stance, vertical stance. The hands should feel really natural now if they didn't before. Make sure Dr. V can tell the difference between your L stances and your vertical stances. And your L stances, your fixed stances, more importantly. Can we see the difference between your L stances and your fixed stances? They should look very different. The body weight as well as the length makes a big difference to the look of those stances, to the appearance of the stances. Jacob, your vertical stance tends to be a bit too short. Okay, you need to lengthen a little bit your vertical stance. Just a tiny bit. Lengthen the fixed one as well, Jacob. Keep the fixed one a bit longer too. Fixed stance a bit longer. Uh, Liam, you're getting little little flicky gun knocks again. Reach back, block forward. Reach back, block forward. Reach back, block forward. Okay, come on. Now we'll throw in rear foot starts. The legs are bent, so we get full sine wave again. Now notice, of course, that from my parallel stance, this is the first prime example of not coming up on my toes when I have to go from here to a bent leg stance. We do this all the time. Walking starts from here, down, up, down. We go down first. So when we start with straight legs and finish with bent legs, well, a bent leg in the case of walking stance, we'll start with bent and finish with straight. We don't come up onto our toes. Okay, now rear foot starts from here. One, two, three. One, two, three. So the same motion, just left and right. Remember that angle of the back foot's 15 degrees, the angle of the front foot's 25 degrees. 25 degrees is not much. It's the same angle as the back left foot in your walking stance. Okay, but it's slightly more than 15. In fact, I think with a, a lot of cases, people do 25 degrees in both feet in their L stances and fixed stances. They're too far out. They're quite straight. And then this one has a little bit more of a bend in it. So go left and right, 
Remember you sit down in your rear foot stance. Front heel is off the floor. Liam, your heel is too high. Your heel is too high. Drop your heel a little bit. Yes, it just stop the floor, just stop the floor. Also make sure in your rear foot stance that your hip isn't back behind your leg. Your hip is over the top of that stationary leg. Don't let it push out. Very common here for people to do this with that hip sticking out. Good. Drop more, drop, drop your body. Drop your body a bit more, Liam. Jacob, the opposite on this one, this, you're making Good. this one a little bit too long, Jacob. It's actually quite a short one. Only about a fist, one fist between your heels. Slightly more than a fist for tall, skinny guys and girls. A little bit more than that, Jacob, kind of in between what you are. And dro drop your heel a bit more. That's it. It's too high, it's too high. Heels just off your the ground. Too high. Drop it. Lower your heel, Jacob, so it's just off the ground. You are a little bit longer than that now. Yeah, there we go, just yes. off the ground. Just off the ground, just relax the ankle. Heels just a little bit off the ground. Cool. Okay, and come on. Now the reason that I was doing all of this with guarding block is so that we can think about the beaming stance. Because bending ready stance type A has a guarding block. So it's not this, which you see all the time and it, it's awful. One, two, three, drop down. One, two, three, drop down. One, now notice this foot comes straight up and it comes up as my body drops. Don't extend your foot and swing it. You will see it and it's wrong. People do this quite frequently. They extend this foot forward and then swing it back. Like they're trying to kick themselves in the leg for some reason. I don't know why you'd want to do that. From here, feet together, drop down. So from here, first up, we're just going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. And from parallel stance, it becomes really obvious that I just lift up. Sine wave, down, up, down. Down, up, down. Go. Down. Remember the down action, Liam. You've got a lot of up, but no down. Sit. Sit. It's bending stance. You're going to bend. Good, Jacob. Open out your knee and put your foot in front of you. Isabel, get that foot sword ready and lift the, the, the foot as high as you can to your belt. This way. That's it. So not pointing downwards, pointing your knees outwards. Because what you find from here is when you pivot your supporting foot, it's already a kick. From here, if I pivot my supporting foot, my bum's sticking, but my foot's not. It helps me to lift my knee. From here, pivot. Yes, Lockie. Yep, don't go silly, Lockie. You're saying you have to stop it, Lockie, and you're still doing it. Why are you still doing it? There's other stances you can do. Oh, you may have to stop. Sorry, misread your sentence. Yep, with you. Okay, so while you're doing it, like you just watch that this foot that you're lifting up, don't let your foot flop down to the ground. Pull the toes up. Pull the toes and the foot sort up. All ready for your kick. So Isabel, at the moment you're doing this now, you're going to pull the ankle back. Make sure this ankle's in a foot sword, a kicking position. From here, from my side kick, I can just pivot back, and here's my foot in front of my leg. That's it. Yeah, that's the same ankle, but you've got to rotate the foot out this way. Rotate your foot this way. So this foot sword here is facing in towards your knee. That's it. That's a bit better. Watch your foot shape. Your toes are down, you really need to pull your toes towards you. Okay, come on, everyone come up to the camera. Come up to the camera. One leg up here like this, go. Okay, 
okay, this is not my foot sword. This is just pulling my toes back. Now I've got to angle my ankle this way. Then when I lift my knee, that's my foot sword, right? So you got to pull your big toe up and point your little toe down. Pull your ankle as tight as you can towards your foot, or towards your shin. Then you've got a foot sword. That's the position your body, or your foot needs to be in for bending stance. Okay, go left and right. Oh, one, two, one. Okay, now the head missing. Let's get back to the head missing. L stance, fixed stance, vertical stance, rear foot stance, bending stance, L stance, fixed stance, vertical stance, rear foot stance, bending stance, go. Feel the difference in the stances. Make sure you open out that back knee, Liam. We should be able to see the difference between your vertical stance and your rear foot stance. We should be able to see the difference between your L stance and your fixed stance. Cam, you may want to uh, to check your the length of your vertical stance from the length of your rear foot stance. To me, looking at you here, they seem to be of the same length. The vertical stance is slightly longer. Yes. Okay, and we're going to make that a little bit easier. Pause for a moment. Now from here, we're going to do them all in the same direction. L stance, parallel. Fixed stance, parallel. Verticals, well, from here, I've got to go vertical stance, parallel. Rear foot stance, parallel. Bending stance, parallel. Then the other side, L. Fixed. Vertical, rear foot, bending. Now do them on the same side, go. All five into the other side. Don't shortcut the hands, Cameron, you're starting to shortcut your hand movement. Once you get the flow, get the power in. Reach right back, Liam. Reach back. Okay, now we're going to do it with judge and bowl. Single foot. From here, we'll go L. Then straight through here, fixed. So one, shift in and out again. Then from here, vertical. From here, rear foot. From here, bending. Okay, so we're not coming back to parallel stance in between. Go. So feel the difference in the stances, doing them one after another. Don't go too fast, feel the difference.
I'm going to add one to mess with your heads. L stance, fixed stance, walking stance, vertical stance, rear foot stance, bending stance. Yes, you can do a walking stance forearm guarding block. Give it your shot. L stance, fixed stance, walking stance. Remember with walking stance, you've got to pivot that supporting foot, get your width. It's a bit strange doing it in a walking stance, but it is possible. Check your lengths. Okay, and come on. Okay, if all of those stances, you should feel, well, maybe a little bit less, it's a little bit harder to think of how, they would, how it would be used, uh, the bending stance, but all of those other stances that I find are incredibly useful in self-defense. And the way that you move your body there applies very much in free sparring. You guys will all know from free sparring the difference between this and this, and the impact that that has on not getting hit. Okay, so from here to here, very, very small movements can make a huge difference. Here, very small movements can make a huge difference. So the difference in those stances is really important, not just for your patterns, but for your free sparring and your self-defense. And your self-defense moving from here to here can add a huge amount of power in a very small movement. And that's what we want to work towards. We want to be able to go from here to here and destroy the opponent as quickly as we can, okay, using all the power from the core. So now I want to work through Jung Gun. Okay, we're going to go a little bit over. We're going to go through Jung Gun. Uh, Jacob, you know, Jacob, you actually know Jung Gun, don't you? Oh. Oh, jeepers. Okay, well, everyone can do Jung Gun then just for a special occasion. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work through Jung Gun because Jung Gun's got so much single foot foot shifting in it. So many times that you move from L stance to walking stance, from walking stance to L stance. And then you've got shifts of your, your rear foot stances that you're working in there as well. Don't have any Benny Ready stances, but it gives us a good work, a good base to work on. So let's go, Junguntun. Junguntun. Sorry, Liam, do you have a question? Okay, cool. Jungun, take your time. Let's go one by one so you can feel all the stances. Okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna go to gallery, record everybody so that I can watch too. Okay. Jugunto, Jubi, Ha. So L starts, don't shortcut it. The next movement is a kick. So if people have a tendency to make this too short so they can kick easily, but you've got to finish your L stance here. And then your body weight comes back to do your kick. And then your palm upward block. Go. Your body weight has to move back. Then your palm upward block. Make sure you go underneath the block underneath and knock it up. Okay, and the other side, do. So from here guys, remember, make sure you go underneath the target and then hit it upwards. Not just here, it's not enough. Underneath and up, go. Okay, now knife and guarding block, go. And it all starts. Lots of work on the guarding blocks tonight. Now from here, you've got the first foot shift from walking, uh, from L to walking. Feel the core get involved. And drive that elbow up, the upper elbow strike, go. Now, so we're not winding up too much here. I'm not winding up and then throwing it in, but the movement allows me some hip. So I'm gonna do it, Whoa, drop that hip in. And forward, go, L starts. Adjust your position as you need to if you run out of space. Same thing from here. Drop that hip, boom, into your walking stance. Go, smash that upper elbow, feel the power in it. All coming from here. The core work that we did earlier tonight, all comes from here. Okay, next movement, go. Remember here, the next movement, come around beside yourself, beside, and then drive forward with both hands. They are outside just Slightly outside your shoulder line for two opponents, not for one. Go. The vertical punch you just did is for one opponent. This one's for two. 
Vertical start up, uh, vertical bunch, by the way, can be done for two opponents, but commonly in patterns, it's for one opponent. Okay, now from here, remember your spot turn, front foot moving onto your center line, turn, express rising block, go. And rise. Now we get into another example of the good judge and ball that we have in this pattern. From here, feel this back fist for one, go. Smash it out, get the core involved, use your hips, you've got the opportunity. Now from your L stance, you have to use this drop to release. So my drop to walking stance has to be emphasized. Boom, drop down to my stance, then follow it up with a punch. Go, finish your stance, then punch. After you've released, your feet don't really move. It's just down, up, down. It's just a fast motion punch. Other side, foot to foot, go. Step together, back fist. Now from here, remember you drop down, finish your stance, then just rise up the back heel and punch. Go. Drop down and block, a uh, release rather. Once more. Liam, that time you went back to releasing with your foot coming backwards. It's not going to work. You've got to drop your body into this release or it won't work. Drop and release, then lift up and punch. Go. Drop and release, then punch. Drop and release, then punch. Try this in your yellow belt self-defense. It works brilliantly if you get it right. From here, set foot to foot, right foot comes back in, and double forearm block, go. Backward motion, walking stance. Liam, did you get the right foot there? Should be left foot forward now, Liam. Okay. Now an example of moving from walking stance to L stance with your foot shifting. So bring your body weight back and then boom, side punch and L stance, go. Feel the power in it, lots of core as well. Lift your knee up, cross your hands, high punch, middle side piercing kick, go. And then down into the walking stance. And we wanna work on getting that side piercing kick to shoulder height with a high punch. Now we're in walking stance, pull that back foot, relax, punch out that side punch, go. Now your left foot crossing, almost like you're coming up to a bending ready stance, but you're crossing your hands, loading your foot, pivot, smash it out, and punch with your kick. Then forearm guarding block and L stance, go. Now from here, we've got more judge and ball. The front foot slipping into low stance. Open your hands and slowly drop down. Don't go too slow. Don't try and overemphasize it and make it unnatural. Just slip out and drop into your low stance. Go. Just natural. And you pull into your, foot. With your stance. You should be one shoulder width apart in width. Most stance is the same dimensions as a walking stance, except it's the length of your foot longer. Okay, forearm guarding block, L stance, go. Same thing from here. Turn to full facing, open your hands, and drop down into low stance, go. This is a palm pressing block which in walk, uh, walking in low stance is always accompanied with a palm upward block. So your right hand here is doing the same thing as it was doing in movement three when you were in rear foot stance. Now pull yourself up with your front leg. Angle punch, go. U-shaped block. Ha! Check your fixed stance. Try not to lean too much. Almost up, you'd be up and down, except that you're just reaching over with the top hand a bit. So it's only a very tiny lean with the body. Not leaning over like this. Tiny lean, reach your arm. Foot to foot. Go. Check that your arms are parallel. Okay, this one's not pointing downwards, it's parallel to the floor, both hands parallel to the floor, and your fingertips line up vertically. We shouldn't have one reaching over more than the other one. Tuck the, the low hand into your body, your elbow in against your ribs. Flatten your top arm, so your elbow through to your fingertips is straight. 
and extend it out. Just reach over slightly so they line up. And bottle. Okay, now on your own time, adjust your stepping as you need to, but I want you to think about the single foot shifting, moving from L to walking, walking to L, L to low, all of those movements. Think about getting those right. Liam, remember from here, drop, then punch, okay? Not drop, punch like this. Drop, then punch. Okay, ready, Junguntu, good option. Shi, jump. Take your time, take your time. Load those guarding blocks up, Liam. Load them up. A little bit wider there, Jacob, with the twin fist upset punch. Don't rush, Liam. Don't rush. When you do the side kick, pull the other hand back to your hip. High punch with one hand, other hand comes to your hip, but keep your shoulders open. Don't drop your shoulders. You want to use the muscles around your bum to get that middle kick. Lift the leg. Liam, drop your stance. Sit in your stance. Yes. A bit more 50-50, Liam. You've got a little bit too much weight on the back leg. Uh, it's a bit longer, maybe. And open out that back knee. Open that back knee. Yeah, there we go. What's your fixed stance there, Jacob? A little bit more weight on the front leg. A little bit longer. Yeah, that's uh, looking good. Um, Cameron, your upper hand, bring it forward a bit more. Straighten yes. your wrist too, Cam. Yeah. Jacob, tuck your lower elbow into your ribs a bit more and reach the, not quite yet, there. That's it. Now they line up a bit. Okay, Isabel, make your fixed stance longer. You've got a little bit too much weight on your back knees. That's it. And come on, bottle. Okay, and shot. Okay, come into the camera. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them. And as you're doing it, just gently stretch off. We're only going to do a quick stretch tonight because I've run a little bit. Of, I've run 11 minutes over. So quick stretch. And as you're stretching, you can ask your questions. So unmute and ask. Max, I hope you got a bit out of that today without your camera on. Hopefully you are self-analyzing really well. Okay, everyone standing up. Reach up nice and tall. As long as you're not taking out lights, I'm touching my light here. And just hang your body forward. Walk your legs outwards. Just gently use your legs outwards. And hold. And slowly walk them inwards. So you can stand up. One leg behind. After class, just do a little bit of your own stretching so that we can get a good stretching. Uh, make sure you're writing notes. There was quite a lot of technical stuff we covered off today. If any of you don't have that black, hand, black belt handbook, I can get those for you for $20. They're highly worth having because they've got a lot more of the technical detail of them explained out. 
particularly at first the second group. And change. Give it a shake and turn to the party up. Apologies for running a little bit over. Hope you all got something out of tonight. Thank you very much, Dr. V, for your helping you tonight. I'll look forward to seeing you in class all tomorrow. Uh, make sure you're all coming to the six o'clock class tomorrow. Not the five o'clock class for the little guys. Thanks, everyone. Go in. Take a lot. How's up? Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, guys. Sir.